What? Paul. <laughs> Look, you're already angry. I know you're already I'm angry. Maybe we got a guy playing with glory, glory, man. We've been in Castle Fleet too. It's not fucking Barcelona. I mean, he's not wrong, is he? Hi guys and welcome back to the channel, welcome back to another Twiff, which I know is a complete and utter copy of Will and E's Twatty, but um, you know, as a lot of people told me in the last video, but I don't really give a fuck. It's been an interesting week, hasn't it? Um, 150,000 views. I mean, fucking hell. I, I didn't expect that. Thank you to everyone that supported that video, whether it be through a like, a nice comment, or subscribing to the channel. I really do appreciate it. Obviously, when you have a video with that many views, it's gonna get it's, it's bound to get a bit of hate and a bit of negativity. Maybe mine was a bit disproportionate, but um, I, I can accept it. Towards the end of this video, I'm gonna look at some of those comments because they are fucking funny, some of them. But yeah, right now, let's just look at what happened this week in football. And once again, I'm talking about Mourinho and Manchester United who completed a somewhat impressive comeback victory against Newcastle with the piano man. Wow, I'm salty. Alexis Sanchez heading in a 90th minute winner to save United from embarrassment. And let's be honest, it was just that. It was merely a saviour from embarrassment. Going into the game, Newcastle only scored four times in their first seven games. And they are undoubtedly one of the worst attacking teams in the Premier League. But United made them look like fucking Barcelona. They were awful in the first half. They were lacklustre, slow on the ball, there was no movement up front. Their attacking players were just stationary. And they were dreadful defensively as well. They made fucking Iose Perez look like Messi and John Joe Shelby to once again reinforce that he is the English Javi. It even got to the point where Newcastle fans were actually chanting at Paul Pogba, you're just a shit Modi army. If it wasn't for De Gea being De Gea, it really could have been six or seven by half time. Uh, okay, three or four by half time. But Mourinho must have said something to them at half time because they were much, much better in the second half, particularly after Mata scored their first goal. They really turned it on. But to be honest, it couldn't really get any worse, could it? And predictably, Mourinho decided to play the victim card in his post match interview. You know, um, you know, I am 55 years old, and in spite of. Uh, this is the first time that I see in football a man hunting. You know, as, as a friend of mine was, was saying to me uh, this morning, uh, uh, if tomorrow rains in London, it's my fault. You know, I go to London tonight, if tomorrow rains in London, it's my fault. Um, you know, if there is some difficulty to have the agreement of... Um, of the Brexit is my fault. Oh, fuck off, mate. You kicked Wenger when he was down on countless occasions when he was at his worst. You called him a specialist in failure. You just took pleasure out of Arsenal's failings. Stop playing the fucking victim card, mate. Your team has been awful this season. They deserve the criticism they've been getting. And if you're going to give out criticism, you've got to be able to take it as well. It's ridiculous. <sighs> anyway, credit where credit's due. It was a good comeback. They played relatively well in the second half. However, they should never have got into that position and to me, this win just papers over the cracks. As you'd expect, a lot of people online and in the media decided to suck United off, sell it, saying it was a brilliant performance and Mourinho was about to turn it round or had already turned it round. However, some fans did accept that their team had indeed been shit and this win was just papering over the cracks. It's not fucking Barcelona! Seriously! Man, my voice is gone. Can we do sign language? Because I have thought so. I'm gonna... What the fuck is that? Do you think that's sign language for we are shit? Man's moving like meat shoot. Counter attack football at its very, very best. And it... My voice is gone. Can we do sign language? Because I have thought so. I'm gonna... do you know Put what? on a red. Nonce. Well, honestly, in all honesty, I'll, I'll try and speak for you because I know your voice is gone. Does that paper over the cracks? Of course it fucking does. We were shit there. Jesus. Barely from it somewhere. Sky standing Fletcher. You what? I don't get it. What was the philosophy in that shit? What are we gonna hear me? What the fuck is going on here? It's crazy. It's unbelievable. We got a fucking Polish guy here. Playing glory, glory. As if we just beat Juventus like we did, like we did today, and we beat him three two, he come back. Yeah, fair play. Let's go, man. But that, but no, but do you know what? We, we have won the game in the last in the Liverpool. We've won. 
<laughs> no, no, no. What? This man could take McGregor. Jassel, don't take the fucking piss. Don't take All right, Paul, is he, is he still here after the national break, though? Honestly, from the board level, are they looking at thinking that won't paper over the cracks? He's still going to be here, or do you think they'll take action? Thank God for what? Listen, mate, let's get in perspective. Yeah, he's paid 50 million more than Pep. That's one fucking player. He spent 100 million more than Klopp. Don't fucking tell me that's acceptable, mate. John Shelby! He look like fucking Ian Esther! What did I say? Anyway, as you can see, the mood of the more intellectual fans is still very negative. They still want Mourinho out. They still think the wind's just papering over the cracks. What do you guys think? Tell me below. What do you think of Mourinho? Should he be going? Yeah, just tell me below. Also, this week, the big game that everyone was talking about. They were going to say, oh, this is going to be a fucking insane match of football. You know, both two teams, brilliant going forward. Best teams in the country. It was just so built up, you know. But we all couldn't wait for this really open, brilliant game. It ended nil-nil. A completely underwhelming game at Anfield saw uh, Guardiola take a more pragmatic approach, something we haven't really seen, and Liverpool's clock really struggled to break through it. Obviously, the Mares penalty was the capitalist for the best football memes this week. It was a shocking penalty. How in that big a moment could you miss the goal? Surely your only thought is, I've got to get this on target at least, then I've got a chance of getting it in, but he just fucking smashes it over. Oh my God. The best reaction to this penalty was this City fans. Oh, I'm going to go, my, I'm going to lose my nuts. Oh my days. I don't know who's taking it, Riyad. He's at the target, mate. Oh my God. 13 years of her waiting at Anfield for a league win. 13 years. And it's Riyad Mahrez, the record signing. What a way to introduce yourself to City Faithful. What a way if you bend this top corner. What a result this is. This reminds me of Stanford Bridge last season. What an important win this could be, a 1-0. I don't know what Riyad's penalties are like. I know he's a good set piece to take at Leicester. Riyad Mahrez, this is the biggest moment of your career for City. Hit the target. Alisson knows nothing about you. Come on. That's what you get for being a plastic fan. You're clearly not from Manchester, you mug. Anyway, talking of penalties, this somehow happened in the Russian second division this week. Finally, I'm going to look back at some of those comments from the last video, which were pretty good. There were quite a few common themes, such as, can you read? Reading age of a four-year-old. Learn how to read, dude. You can't fucking read for your life. Mate, you need to improve your reading. Learning to read is your next task, little boy. Keep on the good work, though. You cannot read. Can you read? Learn to read. Learn how to read. You can't read. Dude, learn how to read? Where the fuck did you learn to read? Holy crap, this guy can't read, lol. Learn how to read, for fuck's sake. Wow, you can't read, lol. Guy, you gotta learn how to read. Adding in words that aren't there is a big no-no. My man can't read. To be honest, I'd normally defend myself, but um, watching that video, it was kind of fair enough. There are also several comments about me ripping Will and E off, which, to be fair, it's, it's fair. Will and E merch and even the same music. Will and E vibes. Who is this B-Tech Will and E? I found a shit Will and E. Is this Will and E's football channel? Come on, man, you're copying Will and E so much. Even had the totty sound effect. Never seen such a Will and E wannabe. B-Tech Will and E, ouch. Couldn't have been a bigger Will and E ripoff if you had a Geordie accent. Totty, nah mate, twiff. And then there were just some general ones. This guy's bangs remind me of Ron Weasley from Harry Potter. Sounds like a 45 year old, looks like a 12 year old. You're almost the opposite of all people on Arsenal Fan TV. I, I, come on, I don't look 12. You look like the love child of I'm Alex and Alfie Days. Nah. Why isn't Ellen using her show to speak to her fans? Claude is a nonce. <laughs> You can't read, your hair's shit, and you're a cringe bag. If if you could change these things, my life would be happier. Anyway, that is going to be it for this video. If you did enjoy the video, please leave a like, subscribe to the channel. 
Leave a comment below on something in the video, or just 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 anything, even if it's fucking hate. Let's be honest. Follow me on Instagram at free, at we dot love dot you dot Arsenal or on Twitter at we at Alfie Colshaw. So yeah, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.